Gerg Johnson's eyes snapped open, his heart pounding in his chest. For a moment, he lay there in the darkness, disoriented and trying to make sense of the jarring sounds that had roused him from a deep sleep. Then, as the fog in his mind began to clear, he recognized the familiar cadence of his wife's voice, raised in anger and punctuated by the muffled sounds of a heated argument. Sighing, Gerg glanced at the digital clock on the nightstand. 2.47 a.m. This wasn't the first time he'd been awakened by such late-night confrontations, but something about the intensity of the voices tugged at his unease. Cautiously, he swung his legs over the side of the bed and stood, wincing as the floorboards creaked beneath his weight. The argument seemed to be emanating from the kitchen, and as Gerg made his way down the hallway, the words became clearer. It was his wife, Sarah, berating someone in a harsh, accusing tone. Gerg's brow furrowed as he strained to make out the other voice, a man's, low and defensive. Pausing just outside the kitchen doorway, Gerg steeled himself for what he might find, his hands clenched into fists at his sides, the muscles in his jaw tightening as a sickening realization began to dawn. Underscore. No, underscore, he thought. Underscore it can't be. But even as the thought flickered through his mind, Gerg knew the truth. Stepping into the kitchen, he found Sarah standing face to face with a man Gerg had never seen before, a stranger, whose rumpled clothing and flustered demeanor left little doubt as to the nature of their encounter. For a long, agonizing moment, the three of them remained frozen, the air thick with the stifling weight of betrayal. Then Sarah's gaze flitted guiltily to Gerg, her eyes widening in a silent plea for understanding. But Gerg wasn't interested in her excuses. His own eyes narrowed, cold fury slowly replacing the initial shock. Get out, he growled, the words rumbling low in his chest. The stranger didn't need to be told twice. With a muttered apology, he scurried past Gerg and disappeared into the night, leaving Gerg and Sarah alone in the deafening silence. Gerg, I... Sarah began, her voice trembling, but Gerg raised a hand to silence her. Don't, he snapped, the single word laced with a quiet intensity that sent a shiver down her spine. Shaking his head, he turned and walked back down the hallway, his mind reeling. The familiar walls of his home felt like a prison, closing in around him as the weight of Sarah's betrayal threatened to crush him. In the bedroom, Gerg paced restlessly, his thoughts a tumultuous whirlwind. How could this be happening? After ten years of marriage, of building a life together, of raising their two beautiful children, how could Sarah have done this to them? To him? The questions looped endlessly in his mind, each one more painful than the last. When Sarah finally entered the room, her eyes brimming with tears, Gerg couldn't bring himself to look at her. Please just tell me why, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Why would you do this? Sarah hesitated, wringing her hands nervously. I, I don't know, she admitted, the words barely audible. It just happened. I never meant to hurt you, Gerg, I swear. Gerg let out a mirthless laugh, the sound hollow and devoid of any real emotion. Didn't mean to hurt me, he repeated, the words dripping with bitter sarcasm. Well, congratulations, Sarah, you sure as hell succeeded. Turning to face her, he searched her features, desperately hoping to find some glimmer of remorse, some indication that she truly understood the depth of the pain she had caused. But all he saw was fear and uncertainty, a far cry from the woman he had once loved with every fiber of his being. I'm sorry, Sarah whispered, the words seeming to hang in the air, heavy and inadequate. I'm so sorry, Gerg. I never meant for any of this to happen. Gerg shook his head, the motion slow and deliberate. That's the problem, isn't it? He murmured. You never meant for it to happen, but it did, and now we have to deal with the consequences. The full weight of those consequences began to sink in, and Gerg felt a sense of dread settle in the pit of his stomach. Their children, his precious, innocent children, how was he going to explain this to them? How were they supposed to pick up the shattered pieces of their family and move on? What are we going to do? Sarah asked, her voice laced with panic. Gerg let out a weary sigh, running a hand through his disheveled hair. I don't know, he admitted, the words heavy on his tongue. I just don't know. In that moment, Gerg felt utterly lost, adrift in a sea of uncertainty and pain. The life he had built, the dreams he had nurtured, all of it had been swept away in a single devastating moment. And as he stood there, facing the grim reality of his situation, he knew that nothing would ever be the same again. The next few weeks passed in a blur for Gerg. The initial shock of his wife's infidelity had given way to a maelstrom of emotions. Anger, betrayal, 
and a profound sense of loss that threatened to consume him. As the divorce proceedings kicked into high gear, he found himself pulled in countless directions, struggling to maintain his composure and focus amidst the legal battles and the fallout from his shattered marriage. Gerg's days were now a careful balancing act, divided between his duties as a police officer and his responsibilities as a father. At the station, he threw himself into his work, using the high-stakes demands of the job as a distraction from the turmoil of his personal life. But no matter how hard he tried, the pain of his situation always found a way to seep through the cracks, leaving him distracted and on edge. At home, Gerg's relationship with his two young children, Lila and Ethan, had become increasingly strained. The once vibrant household had become a minefield of tension and uncertainty, the air thick with the weight of Sarah's betrayal. Gerg found himself walking on eggshells, desperate to maintain a sense of normalcy for his kids, even as his own heart threatened to shatter with every bitter custody battle. Dad, when is Mom coming home? Lila would ask, her eyes wide and innocent, completely unaware of the emotional maelstrom swirling around her. I don't know, honey, Gerg would reply, forcing a reassuring smile as he pulled her into a hug. But I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere, okay? Ethan, the younger of the two, remained mostly quiet, his brow furrowed in a pensive frown as he watched the heated exchanges between his parents. Gerg's heart ached every time he saw the confusion and fear etched on his son's face, knowing that he was powerless to shield his children from the pain of his crumbling marriage. As the divorce proceedings dragged on, Gerg's relationship with Sarah became increasingly strained. Gone were the days of civil, if somewhat distant, conversations. Now their interactions were filled with bitter accusations and a deep-seated animosity that threatened to spill over into the courtroom. You're trying to take the kids away from me, Sarah would shout, her eyes wild with desperation. I'm not the one who betrayed our family, Gerg would snap back, his voice low and laced with venom. If anyone's going to lose their children, it's you. The verbal volleys only served to intensify the emotional turmoil, leaving Gerg feeling drained and hopeless. He knew that the future of his relationship with his children hung in the balance, and the thought of losing them was a pain he couldn't even begin to fathom. It was during one of these tense exchanges that Gerg first encountered Amelia, the social worker assigned to their case. She had been brought in to mediate the custody battle, to ensure that the needs of the children were being adequately addressed amidst the divorce proceedings. Gerg had been immediately wary of her presence, viewing her as yet another obstacle in his already overwhelming fight to keep his family together. But as he watched her gently coax Lila and Ethan out of the room, offering them a sympathetic smile and a warm embrace, his initial distrust began to waver. Mr. Johnson, Amelia said, turning her attention to Gerg, I know this is a difficult time for you and your family, but I want you to know that I'm here to help. My job is to ensure that your children's best interests are at the forefront of all the decisions being made. Gerg eyed her skeptically, his arms folded across his chest. And how exactly are you going to do that? He asked, the words laced with a hint of cynicism. Amelia's expression remained calm and reassuring. I'll be working closely with you, your wife, and the court to develop a custody arrangement that prioritizes the emotional and physical well-being of Lila and Ethan, she explained. My goal is to find a solution that allows them to maintain a meaningful relationship with both of their parents, while also providing them with the stability and support they need during this transition. As Amelia spoke, Gerg found his defenses slowly beginning to crumble. There was a sincerity in her words, a genuine concern for his children that he hadn't expected. Uncrossing his arms, he let out a heavy sigh, running a hand through his disheveled hair. I just want what's best for them, he murmured, his gaze drifting to the doorway where his kids had disappeared. They shouldn't have to suffer because of my wife's mistakes. Amelia nodded sympathetically. I understand, Mr. Johnson, and I promise you I will do everything in my power to ensure that your children's needs are met, no matter how complex the situation may be. Gerg couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope at her words. For the first time since the divorce proceedings had begun, he felt like someone was truly on his side fighting for the well-being of his family. Please call me Gerg, he said, offering Amelia a tentative smile. Over the next few weeks, Gerg found himself gradually opening up to Amelia, drawn in by her empathy and her unwavering dedication to his children's welfare. They worked closely together, navigating the legal maze and advocating for Lila and Ethan's best interests. Despite the ongoing custody battle and the constant tension with Sarah, 
Gerg began to feel a sense of stability and purpose that had been missing from his life. Amelia's guidance and support helped him to find a healthier balance between his professional responsibilities and his role as a father, allowing him to be more present and engaged with his kids. Yet, even as Gerg's relationship with Amelia deepened, his ex-wife seemed determined to undermine their connection. Sarah made frequent, thinly-veiled attempts to drive a wedge between them, accusing Amelia of overstepping her boundaries and attempting to turn Gerg against her. "'You're just trying to replace me, aren't you?' Sarah snarled during one particularly heated exchange. "'Well, I won't let you take my children away from me!' Gerg could feel the frustration and anger bubbling up inside him, but he forced himself to remain calm, knowing that any outbursts would only serve to further complicate the already delicate situation. "'This isn't about replacement, Sarah,' he said, his voice low and steady. "'It's about doing what's best for Lila and Ethan. And right now, that means working together with Amelia to find a solution that works for all of us.' Sarah's eyes narrowed, a flash of resentment flickering across her features. "'We'll see about that,' she muttered, before turning on her heel and storming out of the room. Gerg let out a weary sigh, his gaze drifting to the closed door where his children had retreated. The uncertainty and turmoil of the past few weeks had taken a heavy toll, and he was beginning to wonder if he would ever find a way to reclaim the peace and stability he so desperately craved. As he contemplated the uncertain path that lay ahead, a sudden realization struck him. The life he had once known was gone, forever altered by the shattered remnants of his marriage. But in the midst of the chaos, a glimmer of hope had emerged in the form of Amelia, a beacon of compassion and understanding in the storm. With a renewed sense of determination, Gerg knew that he had to fight, not just for his children, but for the chance to build a new life, one that might just hold the promise of happiness and healing. Gerg sat across the table from Amelia, his fingers tapping nervously against the worn surface. The social worker's warm brown eyes were fixed on him, a gentle expression of concern etched across her features. I know this has been an incredibly difficult time for you and your family, Gerg, Amelia said, her voice soft and soothing. But I want you to know that you're not alone in this. I'm here to support you, in any way that I can. Gerg let out a heavy sigh, his gaze drifting to the window where the city streets were bustling with activity. I appreciate that, Amelia, he murmured, but I'm starting to feel like I'm fighting a losing battle. The divorce proceedings are dragging on, and Sarah is making it harder and harder for me to maintain a relationship with the kids. He ran a hand through his hair, the frustration evident in his movements. I just want what's best for Lila and Ethan, but it feels like every step I take, Sarah is there to block me. I'm starting to wonder if I'll ever be able to rebuild a sense of normalcy for them. Amelia nodded sympathetically, her expression thoughtful. I know it feels that way, Gerg, but I promise you, we're doing everything we can to ensure the best possible outcome for your children. The court is committed to finding a custody arrangement that prioritizes their well-being, and I'm here to advocate for your family every step of the way. She reached across the table, gently placing her hand on top of Gerg's. But I also want you to know that you don't have to go through this alone. I'm here to support you, not just as a professional, but as a friend. If you ever need someone to talk to, or just a shoulder to lean on, I am here for you. Gerg felt a wave of gratitude wash over him, and he couldn't help but smile. Thank you, Amelia. I don't know what I would do without you right now. As the days turned into weeks, Gerg found himself growing increasingly reliant on Amelia's steadfast support. She became a constant presence in his life, a soothing voice of reason amidst the chaos of the divorce proceedings and the ongoing custody battle. Whenever he felt overwhelmed by the emotional weight of his situation, Amelia was there, offering a sympathetic ear and a gentle, reassuring touch. Slowly, Gerg began to open up to her, sharing the fears and doubts that had been weighing him down. I'm scared, Amelia, he confessed one afternoon, his voice barely above a whisper. What if I lose my kids? I can't bear the thought of being separated from them, of not seeing them every day. They're the only thing that's keeping me from falling apart. Amelia reached across the table, giving his hand a gentle squeeze. I know, Gerg. I know how much your children mean to you. And I promise you, I'm going to do everything in my power to ensure that you maintain an active, meaningful role in their lives. She paused, her gaze holding his. But I also want you to know that you're not alone in this. I'm here for you, and I'll support you every step of the way, both professionally and personally. You don't have to face this battle on your own. Gerg felt a weight lift from his shoulders, 
and he found himself leaning into Amelia's comforting presence. As they continued to work together, navigating the complexities of the custody battle, a sense of trust and understanding blossomed between them. What had once been a wary professional relationship slowly evolved into a deep and meaningful connection. Gerg found himself drawn to Amelia's empathy, her unwavering dedication, and the way she always seemed to know the right words to say. And as their bond grew stronger, Gerg began to notice the subtle shifts in his own emotional landscape. The all-consuming grief and anger that had once dominated his every waking moment began to give way to a cautious sense of hope, a glimmer of possibility that he hadn't dared to entertain since the day his world had come crashing down. One evening, as they were meeting to discuss the latest developments in the custody case, Gerg caught a glimpse of Amelia's smile, the way it lit up her entire face and seemed to chase away the shadows that had been weighing him down. In that moment, he felt a strange fluttering in his chest, a sensation he hadn't experienced in far too long. Amelia, he said, his voice low and tentative, I, I don't know how to say this, but I think I'm starting to have feelings for you. Amelia's eyes widened slightly, and for a moment, Gerg feared that he had overstepped, that he had somehow jeopardized the delicate balance of their relationship. But then, to his surprise, Amelia reached across the table and grasped his hand, her expression open and understanding. Gerg, she said softly, I have to admit, I've been feeling the same way, but I also know that we have to be careful, given the sensitive nature of your situation. I don't want to do anything that could compromise the custody battle, or more importantly, your relationship with your children. Gerg nodded, his heart pounding in his chest. I understand, he murmured. Believe me, the last thing I want is to jeopardize my kids' well-being, but at the same time, I can't ignore these feelings. They're too important, too real to push aside. Amelia's thumb traced gentle circles on the back of his hand, a small, reassuring gesture that sent a spark of warmth through Gerg's body. Then we'll take it slow, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. One step at a time, and make sure that we're always putting your children first. Gerg felt a wave of relief wash over him, and he couldn't help but smile. Thank you, Amelia, for everything you've done and for being the one constant in my life right now. As they sat there, the world outside seeming to fade away, Gerg knew that he was standing at a crossroads. The path ahead was uncertain, fraught with challenges and obstacles that would test the very foundations of his life. But for the first time in weeks, he felt a glimmer of hope a renewed sense of purpose that had been missing since the day his world had been turned upside down. With Amelia by his side, Gerg was determined to fight for the future he deserved, a future where his children were safe, happy, and loved, and where he might just find the chance to heal and rebuild his own shattered heart. The road ahead would not be easy, but Gerg knew that with Amelia's support and his unwavering love for his family, he had the strength to face whatever challenges lay in wait. And so, with a deep breath, he squared his shoulders and stepped forward, ready to confront the next chapter of his life head-on.